Good evening. We are back today. We're cooking with cheese, serving up history. Um, our channel is doing terrific. I'm asking you guys to keep subscribing, get other people to subscribe. Our numbers are going up. Um, next thing I would like for you to do for me is spread the word, even by Facebook, phone call, or whatever. This channel is coming from the community to the community. Cooking with Chief started on radio show, as you all know. Now Cooking with Chief come out the studio. We are recording this interview for Cooking with Chief, Serving Up History. Um, I have a guest with me today who will introduce himself for the recording because I don't want to take and add to or uh, subtract from his title and what he does. Um, today is, uh, I'm going to put it like this, a great day. We didn't actually proclaimed the uh, holiday for Pierre Jose. Um, that's one dish we didn't served up, but it still has some side orders to go with it. Let's put it that way. And hopefully 2023, we'll be showing you more ingredients on the Pierre Jose Day. We have a lot of other great things coming up. Um, some things on this show is local. Some things on this show covers the Florida parishes. Something on this show cover national and international issues. Um, I'm honored today to have a guest here. Um, I would like for him to introduce himself um, to the audience. Y'all know when we serving up and cooking up dishes, Louisiana known for gumbo. So being that we deal with gumbo, guess what? You got to add all the pieces in the pot to get a good gumbo. Gumbo has the good, bad, and the ugly. Some people don't like some things and some love it all. So today with me, I have Mr. Tom Aikland. Um, I have not had the pleasure in the past for he and I to work together over all these years. So today will be, really, y'all going to be seeing us sit down and really chop up some seasoning together and throw it in a pot for you guys. Um, this is not a pre-written um, script, none of this for neither one of us. This is our first time fixing to do this in St. Tammany Parish, hoping it can help clear up some stuff, and also make some things even a little better. Uh, Mr. Aikland, uh, it's nice having you on the stage, and a lot of people don't know. I think the last time me and him talked, I called him on the phone, and I was fussing. I'm good at doing that. So I guess when I called him this time to do my show, I'm guess he'd be like, okay, what's she calling him for this time? Tell me off again. And I told him, no, I think it's time for healing. I think the community need healing. And we may research in different directions for different purposes, but the bottom line, we all say we're doing it to bring better information to the community. And y'all know out there, chief talks to whoever, wherever, what color, what denomination, chief always willing to talk to people to see where they're coming from and what brings about what they're cooking up. Because uh, when we start cooking up history, we have to realize, Mr. Aikland, sometimes we add other things in the pot that don't belong there. And if you add one thing, sometimes it changes the whole flavor of what you're trying to cook up and serve. What I want to do and have been doing is taking what my ancestors gave me, the base. And the base in Louisiana is what put the oomph in something. If you don't have the right root, like I tell y'all, you're not going to get the right taste on the tail end. So I come from the root of this whole history of St. Tammany Parish. Um, as I've said, my family was here before this was America, before it was France, Spain, or Britain. So we come from the base and we came through the phases of the different sausages and, and seafood thrown into the pot. And sometimes other people come in at a phase. And when they come in at their phase, they see one thing. But they didn't see what was put in the pot in the beginning. They walked into the kitchen when the root had been made. They didn't know how long it took to make that root. Is the root, baby. Is the root. So, Mr. Aikland comes in somewhere with the American point. He's not originally St. Tammany Parish, or should I say originally West Florida. West Florida, and I guess both of us going to agree on a lot of things to the T, and some things we may not agree. So we want y'all to flow with that. Why? Because we're coming from different uh, uh, angles of the story. But what we're trying to bring is 
He have researched for years. What did he come up with? And I didn't only research. I lived a life and researched. What did I come up with? If we leave this earth like I told him and leave this gap and not put this recipe out there properly, or more than one way the recipe is put together, okay, uh, 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 we're going to confuse the next generation. St. Timothy Parish have a, a history that go beyond St. Timothy, beyond St. Ferdinand, beyond America. Um, and that's where the beauty of it is, back there. Because right as we come forward, we done lost all of the history. We want to just stop at the 1800s and come forward. We don't want to go back into the 17 or the 1600s. So by not going back, you don't get a clear picture moving forward. So I'm going to let Mr. Aikland talk about what he have in his research time. Uh, first, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to St. Tammany and your interest to the tribe, uh, Mr. Aikland. Well, as you know, there is no ugly in gumbo. You can put anything in it. If you burn that root, you well, can stop the gumbo. Yeah, anything going to be burned. <laughs> I make gumbo with eggplant and sweet potato. See what I'm trying to tell y'all? A whole different so, gumbo. Exactly. You know, and it was good, let me tell you. And, you know, let me say, I admire what you're doing because I told you on the phone, history is about others, but heritage is about us. And if we don't take our heritage seriously enough to pass it along to the younger people who don't know doodly squat about it to begin with, unless they're taught. You know, they're not going to appreciate it. If people are not aware, they will not care. And history is about other people, but heritage is about us, and we need to make sure that other people know about it. And one of the things that we're doing is to bring the heritage out to the public in outdoor display technology. We have developed a system of using displays along our trails. I, I got a grant back in 2006 from the Federal Highway Administration to develop a series of heritage corridors and theme trails all across the Florida parishes and the river parishes. 14 parishes from the Pearl River to the Mississippi River. And I traveled all over talking to people like you, you know, who know their heritage. They, they're the ones who are the experts what gripes me is that sometimes politicians and the bureaucrats spend taxpayer money hiring people from outside. I agree. You know, and to come down here and tell us who we are. We don't need that. You know who you are. You know, I'm glad you touched on it before you go any further. I want to come back on that part with you. That have been the problem. Oh, yeah. All along. Yeah. Someone else telling our story. We have not been allowed through Jim Crow law. And, you know, we got to be honest. That's that bad in the gumbo. There were laws passed that forbid us from speaking for ourselves. And, and, and I tell a lot of my friends that's white mainly, I'm like, a white person can come here, they can get grants, they can get on agendas, they can speak with the government. We still have to battle. And when we look at St. Timothy Parish as a whole, where's the people of color? We live here, but we don't get to talk for ourselves. I, my history go back, and I've saw everyone that's been writing these histories, none of them history intertwines with our history. And I see people intertwine the Creole and the, the Indian and lap this stuff like it was all hunkadory. But we don't talk about who enslaved or tried to enslave the first um, Indians that was enslaved in this area and sold in slave trade. Those things are important with the history, not just 
see the Indians, they were here, they are gone. What happened to them? Because a lot of historians, when they talk, it's as if the Indians was here, then they were gone, then they came back again, but it was in another spot. And, you know, it's confusing. That's what's confusing the younger generation. If we can uh, disagree without being disagreeable as people in history, we can bring forth. I'm sitting on this stage with my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, and my cousins, and I'm proud to be here with them. I feel more safer with them that's dead than those that's living. Why? Those that's living is doing the damage. Those that's dead is being used as a part of changing things. My grandfather, for instance, Pierre Jose. How I'm, long have you been doing research on your Well, it ain't about research. I was born and raised with my grandfather. Well, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the Indians were verbal. You know, they, yeah, they didn't write. It was that's why I got seven, seven generations This lady right future. here, I grew up with her. Right yeah. here. Yeah, I can tell. I can okay. see the result. I grew up with her. This is my great That's aunt. your grandma. No, no, this is my auntie. You know, everybody up here play a role in my life, and I can point to them. Uh -huh. And I see a lot of pictures that white people took back in the days, and then they would send them a picture back. Y'all with where I'm at? Now I'm starting to see these pictures pop up on the Internet from universities or whatever. Some of these pictures have never been out there uh, 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 that we have, and some... Hey, this is Tanema. I even saw in the museum in Lacombe, people have Tanema, they don't know who she well, is. Well, I have it in my book. Okay, That's, so you know. everybody writes about it. That's my auntie. So, not only is she my auntie, she's a well-known dead Indian around America. So, I'm not the first Indian from here to be yeah. well-known. Yeah. She's pretty famous around the world this day and time. But... If I ask people what her name is, I, I get kicks laughing at when people write her down as uh, P.S. Tanema. That's not her name. That's in the Muscogee C. Tanema. C. A. Emma. And, and, and around the world know as P.S. Tanema. That is not her name. Some women have to have been asking the question to get the answer. Who is that? C. Tanema. And it became her name. See what I'm saying? But my grandfather knew this was his auntie. So I know her real name. Do you know Matilda? Well, Matilda is, was out of the Lacombe area, and I was her cousin in that, that yeah. area, yes. Uh, um, Helen, uh, Helena, yeah. which most yeah. people said Helena, like St. Helena. It wouldn't have been Helen, it would have been Helena. And that's Helena over here. So Helena lived with Tanya. Mm -hmm. Those two come together. Actually, that's Tony Emma's slash and B's on Helena. How that happened? When these historians come around documenting, I had it happen to me. I took a picture with one of my cousins, Kenny, at my house, and he says, can I take a picture with your slash? I normally don't do that because that's a no-no. And I let him put my slash on. He wanted to see it. And the next thing I saw that picture all around the country on the internet. That's not his slash. He just asked to stand down. I had my different slashes telling him the story of what the slashes meant. And he put it around his neck. We took a picture. And now the world have the wrong image of that slash. So history, sometime, Mr. Aikland can be deceiving. Okay, audience. Now... This is my grandfather, my grandma right here behind me. My grandmother that raised me was raised in a palmetto house. This is they people right here. These are my family. I saw the picture over there with the, the um, painting that uh, was done prior to Bruce Nell. I saw it on the Oklahoma little page. Some of my members had called me and they said, do you know the, the picture of the village in Bonfica is on in Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma don't even know who we are or where we no. at. <laughs> and don't care nothing about if we survive or not. So it was so funny when he made the recording. He said, oh, this come from somewhere in Louisiana. And this must be our ancestors. Who he was talking about? Tony Emma and over there. So if Tony Emma is your ancestor, then that means I must be kin to you. Well, you know, you wouldn't even, we wouldn't even have those pictures 
if the U.S. government had not sent this guy down Come on now. in 1909 or 1910, something like that, to take that picture, to record the last of the Choctaws, because you know they they not only removed the Choctaws in the 1830s from they the came map, back for us but again. they came back. Yeah, yeah they came right. back because why? To get the timber. All right. So they needed see. to bring that railroad through. Now we're on the timber. You know, now we're back to Potavon. To what? Potavon. The yeah. family. Well, I I I don't know exactly well, all the I'm, names. I'll name the names, but they were the yeah. big, you know, big corporations from up north that came in, cut ninety five percent, ninety five percent of all the uh, um, cypress in the Manshack Swamp of the virgin pine tree. I saw in Kill Mississippi in the nineteen forties when they were cutting the last of the virgin pine forest over there. I counted the rings. That's after they had And they done, were 2,000 years old. That's after old. they had done cut. You know, uh, In sad. Greenville, as they want to call it, uh, all along that area was forest. Yeah. A beautiful forest was here. So, some may call them a carpetbagger in history. Some people, don't, the younger generation, don't even know what a carpetbagger is, what, what, what became carpetbaggers. That's it. Uh, the carpetbaggers came in. And we got to... You know, these names, I didn't give these names. These names are documented in history, okay? Um, just so happened I grew up in a family that was also telling me who took our stuff. So the carpetbaggers come in. And what people don't understand, the reason they came in is because the United States was broke. And the wealth was down here. The wealth was in those trees. Yeah. You know, uh, um, the wealth was in the tar. The wealth was in the pine sap, you know, that they really... Wanted. And the then they had insult assault. to injury. After they clear cut the forest and cleared out, they came back to get the stumps That's out of the ground. They dynamited some, they dug most so of them. So they could out. get the fat lava. Yeah, exactly. And left big holes filled with water. Mosquitoes breed. Now we spray poison at night to kill the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. you know, so the de let's call that early developers. That so the developers. Like today, the developers are coming and they're cutting down the last of what they tried to grow back in the last 200 years. They want to cut that down now and put something that would not ever allow them to come back. And that's called Corn Creek slabs and subdivisions and shopping malls. So uh, what can we do about it? That's the thing. You know, you can talk all you want. I am trying my best and I think this is where we come at. This is where we, why we're here at this table today. Yeah, uh, right. uh, 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 Well, I'm doing... What I can for We as know long as I developers can. destroyed this for the greed of the wealth. And we're not going to just stop on America. Let's go back. What did the French, the Spanish, why I wanted you to come on and talk with me? You researched from another angle from me. We have not influenced each other's research. Together, <clears throat> we need to discuss what we done ran across good, bad, and the ugly. You know, cutting the trees down was the most ugliest thing they could have done because it changed the ozone. Of yeah. the world when exactly. they cut those trees exactly. down. That was, the air was affected. Exactly. So when people were coming in the earlier years, they yeah. were coming for the healing because the Indians here were healthy because of the ozone. So the, 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 the developers come through, they don't care about the ozone. They care about wealth. Money. And Greed. people don't understand. New they, York was the They actual, worship the unholy trinity. Ego, ignorance, and greed. <laughs> True. You know, uh, that, that's their God. Oklahoma wasn't even in existence when a lot of this started with the, the black Europeans. And a lot of people don't want to give that credit out there. But it need to go to who started the destruction was black Europeans coming in. And, and, and when you research, you, you see them as of that. But we want to call them French and Spanish. But they were black Europeans as well as white. So I don't want people walking out thinking, oh, white people own the slaves. We're all guilty. Okay, come on. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, the white people tired of wearing this here um, banner or weight on their back that the white man did this and the white. Let's change that word in history because historians put themselves into that zone by making it look like white. So they created white supremacy. But along with white supremacy, also they picked up the blame for some stuff that they had not even done first. Because you know white people down here. And if you do research, you see it was more Indians and free people of color than it was of Europeans or whites. The color is green. 
green like money. He still that, did that color. Yeah, but that's it. That's what I'm saying. He still did color. And yeah. um, they have dead presidents on it now and stuff like that. But it, that's, that's the main thing they wanted, the wealth. So when I look back at why my people became victimized, and I hear people, oh, it's a shame what they did to the Indians. You know, we're not dead. So stop writing us out. We are still here. So if Tanyama was here and Mom Tatine and all of them, they battled through this in their era. Same thing I'm battling. It's not the trees cutting as much, still that. But the other part is building these shopping centers that's not lasting over 30, 40 years and um, building these subdivisions that's substandard, not worth building and blocking up the wetland, flooding yeah. everybody out. Yeah. This is not new. And this is what people no, understand. Exactly. Black it's and continuing. White. That's the thing. So if they yeah. did the damage to my people for this land, and the access to the rivers and bayous and lakes. Do y'all understand? We're the only place in this Gulf Coast where you can get 10, 59, y'all with me? 10, 59, and 12. Also in this area, you got the Mississippi, you got East and West Pearl, you got the Boca Chuda, you got the Shafunta, you got all these waterways, which was the highways, mm, national highways. So this place was a wealth when France saw it, but then France didn't know how to make it turn into the money machine that Spain did, or Britain did, or America still doing. But France saw that they needed this access. So the whole battle was to move us out. And why I wanted to talk to you was thinking, have you ever realized they keep saying the Mississippi Band of Choctaw and Mississippi Choctaw? Have you ever, in any of your writings, uh, um, clarified that the Mississippi is over where New Orleans is today. That's the Mississippi River. So everything on this side was classified at one point in time as what? The Mississippi. They were talking about the river, not the place. So historians have wrote it like Mississippi got to cross over the Pearl. That did not exist down here before the United States. That Mississippi just came about after the United States. Wasn't there through France, wasn't there through Spain. It was just West Florida. Then West Florida get broke up. I'm not following you. Come. Okay. At, before the United States, before the winning, uh, we keep saying the Battle of New Orleans. What we really need to say is the Battle of West Florida. Because you're talking about them parishes on here. That was a part of West Florida. Yeah, I, I know, but what, I, okay. I, I don't, I don't the quite The Mississippi understand. River is over toward New Orleans. That's the beginning point yeah. of West Florida is by the Mississippi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. M Mississippi was the river that was used to describe from the Mississippi River to Pensacola, Florida, is West Florida. West Florida, yeah. All right. Spain claimed all of that. All right. And it was considered from the Mississippi to Pensacola was West Florida. On the other side of Pensacola, you go into East Florida. Correct. Yeah. So if someone don't write the history right, like right now people talk about West Florida, well, they will not stop here at the original head place of West Florida. They're going to end up going way to Pensacola, which was the tail end of West Florida. You see what I'm saying? So if people don't clarify the, the timeline and the gene um, genealogy of the people, you just lost all of us on this side of Pensacola as not being a part of West Florida. Are you with me now? History can get lost just like that. That's a major piece of my history missing. We didn't become a part of the United States, Louisiana, until 1808 by decree. James Madison, C.C. Claiborne, the president of the United States and the appointed governor of the state of Louisiana. Well, Prior to that, I'm in, if we look at it, I'm in West Florida. The revolution in West Florida was only one of three successful ones, Texas, California, and West Florida. That's correct. And then, you know, so we took it over uh, after they, I think they only lasted like 72 days, the Republic of that West Florida. That was the Florida. rebellion, yes. Yeah. You the know, one so, star. Huh? The one star. Yeah. We held it for a little bit. So. But nobody know why that battle came about. And that battle has a, a significant part in history. Well, are you, you familiar with Kid Ory? Yeah. Yeah, uh, his his house down in 
St. James Parish. That's where the, that battle started. They, you know, if you well, get a chance, you ought to go down there. And, and then a lot of people don't understand Baton Rouge was not the capital. At that time. No, I, no, it was See, New They didn't move that, they didn't play this doggone cup game again. They didn't yeah. move the capital. So when you think well, in capital, you're going to think Baton Rouge, but Baton yeah. Rouge was not the capital. Yeah. All right? So the coup d'etat that was pulled on us was these three cups with different stuff funded and keep moving. And if you blink, move your head, you don't know where you're at. Y'all with me, audience? So I want to go back to this point of right where you're at. We get lost somewhere in that, in that cup shuffle. Of, of, of the capitals and stuff. By when people looking at it today, thinking the capital always were in Baton Rouge. That's the first thing. And then our history books that kids are learning in school, I'm somewhat against them teaching history in school. My grandfather was really against it because it's his story and not the real story. Oh, don't get me started on what they teach in okay, school. So I mean, that's, that's a bunch of bull. The story have dumbed down the black the white and the Indian communities that's being taught through the educational system. But then there are factual information that need to be incorporated. There's a yearning community. for learning that is not being met by the conventional educational system from kindergarten all the way through college. Okay, we agree and that's on that. what we can do. We can bring what we know to the public in these where, where the public goes, I, in the parks, I, I, in the I, I have been doing it for 40-some years well, as an adult, but this is where the trends start getting. It's getting confusing with too many stories, and none of them is going to our side. Y'all with me, audience? This is what has to be done. If it's my family story, I think we need to be the heart of the story. Because Oklahoma wouldn't be saying somewhere in Louisiana, and this might be our ancestors, if the story would have went out correctly and said, this picture comes from Bofaka. Bruce Nell says, this is where that picture comes from. Nothing ever goes correctly. Uh -huh. But know if that. we maintain I mean, look, and bring our today, history home, yeah. sure. we have a very wealthy history. But the history is doing what the pine trees did. The carpetbaggers are getting it. Y'all getting what I'm saying? Now some people say, well, okay, who you call? Whoever is the modern day carpetbagger writing our story is getting the wealth of it. They may not be seeing where they're getting the wealth, but they are. And that wealth then is stolen by somebody else. I'm waiting to see Pierre Josain go out. Well, you I know. guarantee you he will not be my grandpa in a few more months. This picture was just unveiled. But I guarantee you He's going to be somebody in Oklahoma's ancestor. Everybody doing our genealogy. This is what I want us to do. Let's be real. The Creole community has a history. It should be done as of that. That is their story for their children. If you take an altar or, or, or anything to it, you're stealing from that family. Good, bad, or ugly, that's your history. I've studied because my grandfather told me tons of stuff. Mommy, uh, Mama Tatine and, and all these people did not declare themselves black or African American. I can bring their grandkids in here today. Well, Chief, this is not history. That's heritage. Yes, it is. That's what I'm saying. What they teach is not Well, can y'all you know? support us with our heritage is what this meeting is yeah. about. Because we actually have the heritage. Exactly. Here. We need to teach that heritage or else it'll I be think lost. One time you and I sat in a room together and it was years ago before Katrina, way before Katrina, I think like 2003 or 2002. I need to ask TJ because I think he said he have a copy of it. The older people, a lot of them were still living. <clears throat> um, actually, Mama Tatine's daughter was still living and uh, she was at the meeting and we all was at this meeting. Um, the parish some kind of way came up with they wanted to record something on the history of our family. And I remember you came and, 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 and Peter Cousin came. Now, I grew up here, and Peter Cousin was a Creole. All my life, my husband went to school at Chateau. Peter Cousin was a Creole. Anybody out there from Lacombe know what I'm saying, Peter Cousin was a Creole. Peter would not align himself with dark-skinned people. I don't care if you were Indian or whatever. Y'all know what he called us. But Katrina hit, and I come back. We did the recording. My family was there. 
And I come back, and Peter went from doing Creole stuff on PBS to being a chief. And I still don't know how that happened, because... He was elected by the Bayou Lacombe Choctaw. There is no such as a Bayou Lacombe Choctaw. Well, they formed a group. Okay, now, they formed well, an I organization. Mean, you can call yourself anything you want. Well, I'm saying, but that's you an know, organization. Yeah. yeah. And that happened after Katrina. I was shocked when I found yeah, out. Yeah, I... I I don't remember when it was, so, to tell you the truth. It Bayou didn't Lacombe succeed. Choctaw was organized. No, it didn't succeed, but no, it still... It didn't. It they wouldn't you. listen. They're well, arrogant. But how are you going to organize a tribe called Bayou Lacombe Choctaw when we are here, and I'm over there in Arkansas and running back so far trying to help people here, and somebody got hijacked my heritage they tried. Well, i tell you what, how it came about, as I understand it. You know, the Gina Band. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went up there, don't, I, I get my dates mixed up, but we went up there for that first conference where... The first powwow ever, and they had been federally recognized. It wasn't, it wasn't a powwow, it was a, a conference of what they call nations. Okay. Uh, Philadelphia people were there, uh, people from Oklahoma, uh, Clifton, you know, it, it was a good group, and they, they, they did a lot. But it didn't continue. But that was when they came down to Lacombe and brought some of their collection of pictures and uh, information and told us that they came from Lacombe. They originated in Lacombe, which I didn't know. You know, I mean, they say I'm they got that. They, this one I don't understand. Yeah. They say, I remember they Chief Jackson, he wrote a thing that said that the reason they survived, and they got federal recognition, guys. And they yeah. got federal recognition, Gina. They have federal, they state rec me federally recognized. Uh, you sure? Yes, I'm positive. Positive. Okay, well. I, they got recognized in the 90s. Um, 95, 98, somewhere. I know there. they're making money. They, they, okay, let's, let's they're go. doing That's a good very, point. very okay. well. So here the Gina who, to get their recognition, said, and I have a copy of it. Do you have my books with me? Go get my white book. The chief then said they only got their recognition because of their connection to Bayou Lacombe, where this one family member of ours named Lewis, he said him and his nine children or something went... Boy, Lewis? No, no, out of the same family. Out of, out of that same family. So they were saying that Lewis... One of the family members went that way, ended up stopping off by them, and when they stopped off, they start intermarrying with them, and that's what saved their tribe. Prior to that, they was marrying Germans and Irish and Scottish, and I always said this around the country, you mean our blood is so strong, none of us can leave here and go create a federally recognized tribe called Gina? Come on now, we got some good blood. None of us. And this ain't nothing I'm saying they said now. But we can't get recognition here, and the only reason they got theirs. Now, first of all, there is no Bayou Lacombe Choctaw. That's white folks' writings. Lacombe was a man who came here with a tar pit. Right. That's what we got to get straight. A but man who were, owned slaves. There, there were people living there when he came there. That's correct. Then they were Indians. That was my people. Now, how do they become... Well, that's why I'm saying Lacombe and Bonfuka... It's the same place. Well, yeah, exactly. They were, they the were place all, was in Bonfuka. my estimation. Well, it was They were Bonfuka. always together. It was... All right. You've been living there a long time in Lacombe. Yeah, but I don't... You, you know, notice how we have people a People are family. very yeah, close well, we don't, about... There you, you know, know, we don't talk our business. No. But one thing you do know as an observer, I just heard you say it, Lacombe and Bonfuka Indians is the same yeah. people. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll always have, have felt that way because of what people I and know. And you also know it was a difference in the Creole community and the Indian community. Oh, they, yeah, well, you know, that's human nature. People. But no, it's just a, we got to understand there are differences. Y'all getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like an Irish community is different from a German community. Their celebrations are different. And they, the Irish fight the Irish, so you know. Okay. <laughs> so... That Creole can't just all of a sudden one day say, well, now I'm an Indian. And that's what actually happened. They actually organized this thing. When I was going through Katrina, 
they organized this tribe that never existed, and my family started calling me wanting to know. Well, what's wrong with that? A lot wrong with that. Like what? Explain it. I'm not, I'm not being confrontational. That's my history. I just wanna... That's my history and culture that's being appropriated by someone who are not us. Well, when, when or misappropriated. Wouldn't that be helping? How? I don't know. When they cut the pine trees, how it helped us? <laughs> well, it helped, helped build the nation. Okay, but how that helped us? No, it didn't. All right, stop right there. You also did yourself. It left, it left them in poverty. I cannot understand. Okay. And they're still leaving us in poverty. Y'all heard he said it himself. So, you know, I'm supposed to let them take what I have as wealth and make everybody else rich. And then we sit here isolated with no voice. They never thought, though, Chief Warhorse would grow up, this little Indian, with this big mouth. America didn't see it coming and became an international <laughs> civil rights leader that could speak for her people and be heard around the country. Isn't that amazing? Because we've been isolated. So I had to go above the isolation of the Gulf Coast. Now, what I'm saying is, how, what's wrong with it? What if we organize a new America? What if I ask America? What if we organize a new America? What would that hurt? What would that hurt? It hurt a lot, wouldn't it? And that's what's happening to us. A country taking over another country. That's what was happening. Someone was trying to wipe us out. And they used local people who were not part of the tribe and organized a Bayou Lacombe Jota. What if I go to the Gina and say, well, okay, if you came out of us, that recognition belonged to us since you said it came from Well, let me tell because you. Because there were no Lacombe. Lacombe came in 1700 when a black European came here, had slaves, got wealthy, and we but got there were be, Indians living there. When my they people, came. my people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there, there always was Indians but it in was Bayou Lacombe. Now, you know what's so strange? Just in the 1900s, what they was just in the 1900s like 1940-something and 1930-something, you still saw Bonfaka all across those areas. Y'all hear me? Now, where do we get Lacombe from? We're going to do a little quick history right quick. 1763. The one from... Um, is when he came. Okay. okay. But prior to that, that was still in Bonfaka. So he come. We're using waterway, guys, not highways. So then the waterway become your address. All right? So how do another European coming from New Orleans or from Mandeville by boat find you on the waterway to get to your location that you then came over here and establish yourself is by saying, I live along by you, da, da, da. Y'all hear? So they created addresses by naming locations. Well, so what? Those names changed the place. Those names. Just yeah, but like, it was called something before he came. Okay, but we don't know about that no more because they don't put it there. Well, right. I don't know it, but let's do this. Obviously, like Bonfaka. Bonfaka in my lifetime. Let me show you for instance. Bonfaka in my lifetime, the waterway was called Bonfaka. My grandfather talked about Long before Bonfaka. your life. Huh? Long before your life, it was called Bonfaka. And then all of a sudden, recently. It's a Choctaw word. Yeah, but now, I didn't hear some people talking, oh, it's a French, there ain't no French word before no, the French got it. French, French say they found it here. The French took a, a Choctaw word and made it French. There you but go. So, now there you go. That's like the Muskogee language. It means river home is what We it, lived on the water. What it means. That's right. So we control the waters. Bonfaka lets you know that we control these base of this water. This is what everybody wanted, what we controlled. We controlled the waterway. All right? Bonfaka. So, here we sitting in Bonfaka. Now, one day I was going down the road on 190 and I saw this stupid sign to my Bayou Liberty. I'm like, well, day when I moved, we done moved again. See, Europeans don't have a problem leaving their family in Europe and come here and don't ever look back. They don't even know they can, folks. We as Indians have a different culture, a different way of passing heritage. We do want to know our waterways. That's why we name them. We do want to know where our mounds is. But the white people keep digging them up. We had a governor digging up the mounds out there at Fountain Blue, which I don't get to say nothing. Some white people got that. They ain't even from here. And they done dug up the mounds and used it to pay, pay roads with shells. Okay. You want to bring that, please? Um, 
the, the thing I'm not getting to understand is how do the white people get the first say and the last say and normally it's wrong from the beginning to the end because they assume. Because they have money. Okay. Follow the money. Well, I have truth. Chief, <laughs> come on. Follow the money, you know. It's, well, I'm tired of following the money. Well, and keep going I mean, the what way. I'm saying is that's the basis. Well, that is the basis. You, know, you the, and I both that, know them, that. Them that has the gold make the golden rules. Okay. You know? So here we got a fake by your Lacombe Choctaw that it looked like the federally recognized tribes came in and set up in my territory. I know that already without you telling me that because I've been doing my homework too. But is that right? Is it right that a group of Indian tribes could come to my area and try to push us out? This is what's been going on. And yes, it does hurt my people. Because then they start to take in my history, sending it to all of them. And I want that corrected before I die. Well, how do you correct it? Tell the truth like you're doing right now. Okay. Well, it's time the truth come we out. We used to do seminars called Lies. My Louisiana history teacher taught me. This is how we do that. All right. I have a friend over there. I'm not going to call your name. You're behind the light. But I'm not have you ever name. taught? But you and I both have a friend. Other than this? Right? Huh? Have you ever taught, like, groups oh, of people? Oh, yes, all the time, man. Y'all just don't, white folks don't be knowing nothing I'm doing. I got white friends, they're like, I didn't well, know then, you did then, that. Well, then you're not doing the job. If yes, they, I am. No, no, and If I no, tell a white people, they're going to turn wait, it around. I disagree with you. Go ahead, yeah. tell me what you I'm got doing. You got to do a better job if you're only reaching That's why we meet you. right now. Well, that's why I'm here to help you. Because we got a common friend. I'm here to help you. That says, this way it needs to be done. I want you to But every time I would say something, it gets stolen. Can the white people and the Creole stop stealing something every well, time not I say stop because there's money in it, dear. Okay, well, can <laughs> y'all that <laughs> say y'all not up. making the money? Tell <laughs> the truth. We understand there's money in it. It's not the color of white <coughs> nor black, it's the color of green. Okay. But you know I'm from the real heritage here. That's what I'm saying. You didn't really Yeah, yeah, I, I I I know that and I admire what you're doing. You know, and I'm, I'm here to help you. Because what if Russia come to take America? This is what they're telling me right now. Let Russia take America? Or should America stand up and fight? Come on now. If, if I got to go down with the ship because they making money in green, then what you think Russia and the other countries want in China? They want to make some green too. So why is white people cutting up in America about another country taking it over? It sounds like to me is, you know, you get rich. Now, after you done got rich, move over. Let me get rich. But who don't never benefit is the people who lives there generationally, who actually heritage is there. And I think what we're doing now, and I'm going to ask y'all for a hand wave so we don't be making all this noise up in here. I, I either wave your hand or keep it down. Don't y'all think what we're doing here in a dialogue? is a beginning that can start the truth coming out. If y'all agree with me, raise your hand so he can see. No, you've been telling the truth for a long time. It's just you're not reaching enough people or the right people. And that's, it, that, that, that's a talent. It, advertising, All right, propaganda. What if, you know, I'm, what if, I admire what you're doing, This one friend you of ours, to do it better. Okay, that sounds good. But this one friend of ours that's here, that I asked to be here with you and I because she know of you, she know of me. She Who is that? Jeannie right there. There she is. Oh, Jeannie. There she is. Oh, Jeannie's here? Yeah, he didn't see you. <laughs> Hello, Jeannie. All right. Jeannie's a peacemaker. I'm just being honest. Well, healing, you, you got, uh, I meant to tell you earlier, you got it right when you said we need a gumbo healing. Yes, a we healing do. gumbo. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we're not going to agree all the way. I want y'all to understand. But I'm telling the truth. And he ain't agreeing. What we disagreeing on is who should benefit from my history. Is mm -hmm. that what y'all finding out too? I'm not disagreeing with you on That's that. what I'm saying. Y'all getting it, right? So, how we start the healing is like I told Jeannie. Bring us that's at the opposite sides of this thing together. And if we all want to be truthful, let's tell the truth and the kids can understand what's happening here. I've been, they've been trying to make me look like I'm crazy, crooked, you know, all of that stuff. 
Tom, no, I don't go around Me trying too? to get no money from nobody. I mean, I can't tell you how nothing. many people hate my guts. You might have was on one of my lists, too. We might try to fix that. That's part of healing. Uh, Mother Mary. I, I'm an honest. Hey, y'all, I'm an honest. I'm an honest person. You know, he was on my list. He know it. But if we really want to heal, this is how you do it. Yeah. I'm willing to come to the public. They say, I really didn't want to be, if they say Tom Mecklenburg said something, I'm like, I'm not going. I'm just, and I want him to know that publicly. That's how you heal. Y'all with where I'm at? No behind the screen, undercover. So people know I felt that way. And then I need to let people know why you and I are sitting here today. Is you really invited me. That's right. And, and I invited him because of Jeannie. Because Jeannie keep hearing me say, we got to heal. I really mean about healing America. What well, yeah, Jeannie's, Jeannie's a good person. Jeannie have a reservation in heaven or something. You know, she go around and she saves everything. You know, we need a whole lot more genies in the world. Y'all listening at me? Mm -hmm. So, Jeannie is not on the front line. You know that. Jeannie behind the scene making phone right. calls right. and sending letters. Right. And nobody never know there's a Jeannie back there. And she has this voice that you can't tell no. Sometimes I'll be like, okay, Jeannie, I just fell enough. So when she came out, DJ, talk to Tom. I'm like, all right, Jeannie, now this is getting to be too far now. <laughs> You're going too far. And then she's over there, but Elvin. And I'm like, Jeannie, you asking a lot of me. But it takes some genies too, right, Joe? In your life. Yeah. And then she was like, and here is his phone number. So she wasn't like backing up. And like, and here is his number. And then she's going to call you back. Tom knows she do it. She do it to everybody. And she's going to see, did you make that contact that she told you to make? Now, isn't she going to do that? That's the kind of genies we need. We need lots the of genies. peacemakers. She really is that. Uh, um, we're going to do a show with Jeannie because I want people to understand. A lot of people don't even know how that park is. Jeannie had her vision. I had my vision. And Kevin had his vision after he come on board. Kevin was a good. And Yes, he is. And and by the time Jeannie kept on whining, and I'm right. Do y'all imagine us being friends and my voice is versus Jeannie's voice? And we sitting down talking to somebody, be like, oh, hey, get rid of both of them out of this room. What do y'all need today? You know, and um, Jeannie and I have worked to save places, not make money. If money was the motive, we wouldn't have been out of here because it's nothing for us. But we got to ask a question now, Jeannie. Why would all these federally recognized tribes come to St. Tammany and organize a fake tribe? That's a serious question that I want you to help me find out. And I'm asking you with, uh, in here with... Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I'll be honest with you. I'm you not gotta, either. But not to, to that point, but we got to find out what happened. Uh, am I right about that, y'all? I yes. don't yes. know anything about it. I didn't know. I don't, I don't know anything about well, I knew Tom knew a little bit because they invited him to take a picture. Yeah. He was in the picture with them when they actually first organized this thing. And they had their little flag and they put it in the paper. So I know he know that much. He may not know the whole story. Y'all get what I'm saying? Right. He might know in part. No, I just told him, I, I'm, I'm, I'm from Cherokee heritage. I'm not Choctaw, but since this area was Choctaw, I want to learn about it. I, you know, I didn't know anything about it. But what, what I don't understand, if these tribes came here, are they something? Now, what Carl, tribes are you referring the to? The ones you were talking about with, with Gina, and Gina said they oh, come Gina, here. yeah. Why they didn't contact the real tribe? They didn't know about you. That's why I'm telling you, you're not doing the job good enough. They know to... about me. I sit on boards. I was on the state boards and different stuff. They know about me. Well, why didn't they I'm contact the wrong them? How many of these y'all see look like this? How many Indians you see running around the United States looking like this? Right now. And that's the truth. And that's what need to come out. Indians that look like me and my family, nobody know about us. Why? You cannot go in the archives. I know you've done it. You can't go in the archives without getting the Indian dark. Am I right about that? That's right, yeah. So what happened to them? So did America kill all of us, hide all of us? What is the story? How we lifted like this and now... Oh, why in the cowboys that the white man made, they say pale face? If a white man called another white man pale face, he's stupid. That pale face called him pale face, pale face. That means there was a difference in complexion. Why does the treaty say red man? Not pink, red. White folks get pink. 
we have red pig, uh, pigments in our skin. Brown is in considered like the penny. You know, and I don't care about one red penny. Y'all remember that old saying people used to say? What color is a penny? Copper color. And the copper changes based on the elements that it's in. It can be darker, but it's still copper. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And, and, and even the lightest of copper is still not going to give you white. We could talk about, you say you Cherokee. I got a little Cherokee in me too. That's one of my parts of my blood. What I don't understand, John Ross and them look like they came straight from off a Europe ship. But see, they, my people were ashamed of it. They wouldn't admit it. But every no. white person got Indian heritage now. And if a person of color say they're Indian, they want to tell us we think and go back to Africa. I don't know nothing about no Africa. I know about these grounds. And that's the history have to be corrected in the school system throughout America because the same elected officials are in office learned this lie that the teacher taught. Y'all read the book, the lie my teacher told me. Y'all read that book, you need to get that book. The lies my teacher told me. Well, the lies the teacher then told the students, the students then took that into legislative office and they're making laws based off lies that their teacher told them. They need to go down to archives. Am I correct on that? They go in the archive, they'll find some real history. It's there. They just too lazy to go get it. Or they don't know, as you just said, what to go get. You know if you research, and it's going to lead you from one thing to the next. And I, I think our elected officials need to do some research on the places that they want to represent.